Welcome to our new live stream control room. So we've been working out of here for a little while now, but I just wanted to give you a tour of our new finish setup because we've actually done this properly. We've gone all custom wiring. We've got everything in here so that we can just roll in and do a stream whenever we want. Uh, originally we had all the equipment in here under the desk and it was making a lot of noise and a lot of heat. And we just, we moved that all next door. We got a server room sitting right there. So we put a whole bunch of cables in and this is this room is now quiet. It's sound treated and it's cool. It's, it's awesome. This is, I'm, I'm loving this new space. So let's go have a walk around and show you how we've got this set up and what we're doing on a daily basis now. So typically how we had this set up, we have between one to three person team. Um, so typically the person left seat is the one that's actually switching, doing everything for the live stream. Uh, we have someone who is uh, bringing in remote contributors and managing clients and that kind of stuff. And we have graphics, we have the machine over there to be able to do all our graphics stuff. So how we had this set up is this is our main machine basically. We've got a Thunderbolt uh, optical cable which is running to the rack which has a Thunderbolt uh, receiver in there, a hub which everything connects to. So it just means that one cable, obviously we've got power as well. One cable we have our video and audio coming in and out. We have networking, we have all the control that we need and it just happens here. So in a general setup if we're doing say a Zoom call, which is going out to the world, we'll have Zoom set up on here. And this is getting a program mix uh, from the switcher. We also have a cam link with a mix minus going into this, and that will be able to send to, typically we have a, a remote host, and that'll be sent from here as well. Um, so we have a mix minus going to them, and we can have individual talk. So we can talk to our guests, we have a microphone ready, and we can have um, discrete lines there. So that is our main computer here. And we also will typically have like the ATEM software and things which is controlling our ATEM Constellation 8K as well. In the seat as well, we also have our Behringer um, faders here, which just, just gives us a little bit of tactile control about being out of bumps and levels and things here and there. So it's just a handy, handy for that. Stream decks, we've got Stream decks galore. We've got two here, which is for our main operator. We use Companion for everything and we just program everything out of it. So we'll have buttons for you know, starting our show, starting our live stream, rolling videos, all that kind of stuff. And of course, we've got our super source layouts, which we will go between and animate between that as well. Uh, this machine here is what we typically use for Zoom rooms. So not Zoom rooms, Zoom ISO. So we have Zoom ISO 2 on here now, and this is how we bring in our contributors. We've moved to Zoom ISO for basically everything now because there's a lot of benefits there. We don't have to worry about um, getting through corporate uh, firewalls or anything like that. Zoom is just gonna work everywhere, which is great. And the fact that we can get SDI out now and get isolated feeds with isolated audio as well is an absolute lifesaver. Because we have a Decklink uh, Duo 2 and a Thunderbolt enclosure back there, which is running four feeds out from here. Uh, we can also run to some NDI decoders as well if we wanna have six. Um, but that means that we have audio from each person and they come up as a different channel. So it means that we can actually properly mix these people doing EQ, compression, it's really cool. This also has a cam link under the table, which is getting a mix minus from the rack as well. So we have a total of two mix minuses built into the system, thinking of adding a third one, just because there's always times we need extra mix minuses, but that allows us to say we have a host coming in here and talking to a remote hosts, a remote contributor there. So we can actually have people talking to each other. We can talk just to our guests. We can talk to our contributor. There's, we have, we have all these options preset and ready to go. So that is our Zoom ISO machine. Uh, we obviously have a whole bunch of multi-views. We used to have, only have one screen up now, but now we have two. It just means that we have so many things we can see at our fingertips, which is super awesome. So when it comes to monitoring, we have our main director's uh, monitor here, which will show program, but also show some LUPs. Super helpful to actually see levels going out to the world. Obviously we've got our meters going everywhere, but this is just super handy to be able to go, cool, I need to stay at this line and just keep everything the same. And we can just adjust our levels as we go. And we also get live feedback in terms of what's happening there. Super nice. We've got a, another multi-view sitting down here just for those things you would just wanna have close. So typically we'll have like keynote notes coming in or things that we just need to see close by. But of course we can move everything around the multi-view however we like. Um, over here, I'll typically have like my personal laptop just for you know checking my emails, whatever, while we're um, getting ready for shows. Uh, and this machine up here is what we'll have as a backup transmit. So we have our main transmit happening here. We also have another one with a cam link going into it, which will be our backup transmit. So it means that if we uh, lose a computer for whatever reason, we just have to come over here, unmute and turn the video on and we're back live again. 
So that just stays there and that's purely just a backup machine. Also, it's nice to have there so that we can actually have the volume open um, a, a little bit and just have that confidence knowing that we are making noise, it is sounding fine, and actually what the people at home are experiencing. So that is super handy. Uh, we have another screen over here which has um, auxiliary controls so that we can um, adjust what uh, the people over here are seeing so they can bring things full screen. So say they're looking at Zoom 1 over here, they can bring that to screen and go, oh, I'm just looking at your screen here, can you make some adjustments or something like that. So that's what's super handy for that machine. Uh, we have, in terms of uh, audio monitoring, we have stereo speakers in here for our audio for listening to the world. So if it goes to that speakers, that's what we're hearing in the world. This is a complete copy of the um, left right bus. We have a smaller speaker under here as well, which is kind of like a shout box. So what we would typically do is say we're in a countdown, which we are now, um, in our countdown role, it will mute the, go the guests going to the speakers and it will start putting them into here. So we can still have a, have a conversation with them and know that if it's going to here, it's not going anywhere else. It's only for us internally. And we can turn on and off that in our um, shout speaker too. So we have these two buses here. We also have a, uh, a PFL bus, which is going to this. So if we want to put some headphones in, just to have some critical listening, we're able to do that as well. And on this side, we have the PC, which is our beefy machine, which has uh, two deck link cards in there. So we have a total of eight ins or outs coming out of this thing. So typically what we'll actually end up doing is having uh, OBS open, a whole, whole bunch of them, so that we can get feeds in and out of this thing. So what will quite often happen is we'll have a stage timer, for example, we'll bring that in as a browser source, and then we'll output that to a output on the switcher so that we can see what's going on and we can send that to the places that we need to. But we have a fiber optic cable, uh, display port cable going to the rack next door, which is where the computer is. So it means all the hidden noises over there. We can work in a nice, quiet, cool room and just work away as if we're sitting next to the machines. So that's basically this room. This room is, you know, it's not the biggest room in the world, but the fact that we've got everything out of here, we only have the things that we need to have is super awesome. And we got so many cables all tucked in nicely, but it's done exactly as we needed it. We have plenty of expansion. We've got SDI and Ethernet sitting everywhere in case you want to add more machines or add more devices, but that is super cool. So what we ended up doing, because we had this uh, structural pillar here for the building, we had to work around it, but we made a U channel going around this pole and then across, and then everything goes up on cable trays and baskets all under the table. So it's all super neat. You're not tripping over cables. It is awesome. Now the other, the other really important thing we got too is we actually got a little um, camera here which you can see up there. The idea behind that is that people at home, we will send them a multi-view so they can see us as well so that we can actually give them a visual feedback and kind of go, yep, you're good to go. A simple thumbs up can make a, make a huge difference and they can just have that confidence of saying, you know, seeing that the crew was there, it's not just going to a blank world. Uh, but obviously we can talk to them but they can always see us which is really helpful. Let's go next door and have a look at the brains of the operation and where all the noisy and hot stuff is. Welcome to the server room. So this is where all the equipment is and how we run everything. So come on in. So this is our main rack scenario because the idea of what, all this is that it's all portable as well. So the control room and stuff there, that all stays there. We can obviously grab the laptops and wander away with them, but this here is obviously super helpful in the, in the studio, but we also want to take it out on the field and do uh, jobs of that as well. So we've set this up into three different racks. We've got our PC here, which is a 4U. I think it's a um, it's like a top of the range uh, Ryzen with a 4090, 64 gigs of RAM. It's basically a fully beefed out thing. We've got a, a Decklink uh, Duo 2, as well as a Decklink 8K card in there. So we have those four IOs. Oh, of course, on top as well, we have a ATEM SDI Extreme ISO, which we just use for ISO records. Uh, so we can do program as well as ISOs, just for those times you need to make an adjustment in edits. Uh, let's move down to the, uh, the rest of the rack. Uh, now we've got the uh, X32 here in a three year rack by itself, just means that we can take it out by itself and you know, use the surface as well if we need. Everything's got cases, we can just throw them in and off we go. So this is where the mixing happens. Now we've got a MADI card in here, which is crucial because we use the MADI to go from the Constellation to the uh, X32 here so that we can get ISO audio for the selected channels that we need. So we don't have to worry about getting, you know, different channels like having to set up Dante around, like don't get me wrong, I love Dante, but having this option of being going, send the audio down the HDMI or the SDI, it will just appear and it just appears and it just works every time. It's great. And it stays in sync as well, which is important.
So moving down to the big rack. This has gone through a couple of changes over its life, but we've got it to a pretty good point now. So starting from the top, we actually, there's a lot of things in here we can't see, but at the top here, we've got five uh, power supplies, which we use to power the Ursa. So we use a lot of Ursa cameras with our system. And so those are DC power supplies to actually power the cameras. So it means that we don't have to run extra power banks or whatever and extension leads. We just have a three core thing of two SDIs and a two pin DC. And then we have the camera, which is permanently on, which is awesome. Um, in here as well, we also have um, an Apple TV. We have a Raspberry Pi for companion. We have a Raspberry Pi for Play B as well. We have a portable router in there for all of our routing needs. So it means that when we come into here, we can just unplug the router and plug into our uh, main core switch and all the IP ranges are exactly the same. So as far as it knows, it's the same network. So it means that we have a router on when we're on location, we can plug in internet into that. Um, but when we're in the studio, just unplug it, swap it with the core switch there, we're good to go. Um, in here, we also have a whole bunch of SDI to HDMI, HDMI to SDI converters as well. Um, so they're doing a bunch of different things for like cam links and et cetera. Um, there's also two um, mix minus um, audio embedders. So how we do that is we go SDI from the switcher to a SDI to HDMI and the HDMI to a HDMI audio embedder, which then grabs some audio from the X32 and we've got a, a loom for that, which will then throw it onto there and send out to those things. Um, and that's basically it for this top three U. There's a lot packed into there, but it's really helpful, as well as um, some 12, 12 and 5 volt rails for powering everything here. Obviously, we've got our Constellation 8K here. Awesome workhorse. We can run this whole rack in 12G, 3G, 1.5G. It's all ready for all that. Actually, not quite 12G because these will only do 6G, but most of what we do is either 6G or 1.5. So. We have three Hyperdex here. These are the Studio HD Plus, I believe they're called. Um, and we use these for both records and playbacks. Uh, now we have um, A and B coming out of these going to um, the switcher so that we can do um, alpha key where we need that. Um, and we also have a, a Ultra Studio 4K Mini here as well so that um, the laptop with the Thunderbolt uh, fiber connection that actually goes into here too. So we can have some more graphics out if we need um, that option. A whole bunch of fans in here because this stuff does get hot, so we just try and pump as much cool air in there as we can and then exhaust it out the back. Um, so that's basically the front of this rack. Uh, there's a little bit of power management stuff at the bottom here, but for the most part, that's it. Actually, no, sorry, we've, also, we've actually got the Thunderbolt dock at the bottom as well as a 16 port PoE Plus switch. So a lot's packed into here, but it just means that we have everything we need. We just roll in and it's a system ready to go. Let's jump around the back and have a look at how we've got this connected. So apologies for the spaghetti back here, but we've done our best to keep things clean and ready. So moving down, we've got our PC here with our ASDI outs. We've got our uh, fiber display port cable as well as USB extension and such going to next door so that this computer just feels like it's there. Uh, I've got an X32 here with our analog um, uh, embeds going out to our main rack as well as a microphone in for when we chat and our control room speakers as well. We have our MADI card here, which is getting our audio to and from the Constellation. Super handy. Uh, I've got a few converters here. I've started mo moving to Magewell for our converters, uh, for SRT as well as um, our capture as well. So we've got the, which one's this called? The, uh, the USB capture SDI 4K plus. This will do 6G um, 4K capture as well as analog audio for embed. So it's actually really cool for an embedder. Um, we use this for NDI and SRT decoding. So this is the ProConvert NDI to SDI. Um, so that gives us uh, up to 3G decode of those things. We also use Streaming Bridge. Uh, so a client that we do a lot of work with, he has a um, ATEM Mini Pro up there as well as a Pearl Nano, but we we're probably gonna swap that out for a Magewell Ultra Encode AIO. So that means he can send SRT and RTMP to us so we have redundant feeds from them. Uh, moving down, this is our um, exhaust for the top section. This is where all their power supplies are. We've got a whole bunch of things in there. Um, so we've got our audio embedders there, our Raspberry Pi sitting there, um, USB extensions, but 
And there will also actually be three 120 mil fans here for exhaust. So we, we had some break in our recent job, so we're just getting them swapped out at the moment. And everything here goes to patch panels on the back, which is all labeled and ready to go. So we got USB going to the um, uh, stream decks out there for companion. We have all our SDI ins at the top here, as well as things like time code, um, bits and pieces like that. We have our multi views, all our outputs, PowerCon in, and a bunch of different things for the audio at the bottom there. So it's a bit of a mess here, but we have everything labeled and we have our snake here of cables so that we can just walk in, bang, 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 plug it in as we were before, load up our show file, and that is ready. Everything's on UPS as well, so we've got our main server cabinet on UPS as well as this whole rack, so the power goes down, we'll keep monitoring in there, keep the rack going, I think about 15 minutes or so, um, so we can make plans if we need to. But that's basically it, this is everything here, so we can pull this out in 10 minutes and having the car ready to go to send out on a job. Don't have to worry about pulling cables through. These are all permanent for this setup and for this room. And it's it's been awesome. Really enjoyed putting this together. It's been a bit of a process trying to fit cables through walls, but it's actually a lot of fun. The other thing too is we actually have cables running to our studio in there as well. So that if we want to run a multicam in there, we can cut that all together as well as our edit suite which we can use, say, as a mixing room. If we want to have someone dedicated to audio, we can have the audio in there with a switcher, uh, sorry, with a mixer, as well as the multi-view on the wall and whatever computers they need. So we run SDI, Ethernet, audio everywhere, just giving us options because, you know, we're, we're in here, so might as well make use of the space. So here we have it. The studio is done. It's so good to just roll in here and just be able to do a project. And it everything just looks good. It just works and we can take the rack out and in without having to affect this because everything just stays here and anything that does move, it's got its case ready to go. So we can just go boom, straight in the case and roll out with it. So I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you learn a little bit. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. But yeah, that's it for this video and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.